the Daily Gospel Network, spreading the good news of Jesus Christ every day. Join our featured ministry for happiness, healing, and purpose. God has plans for your life to prosper you and to give you hope and a future. Join us as we proclaim God's love and help you step into your season. Coming up on the Daily Gospel Network. Welcome church family. I'm Renee Johnson with the Daily Gospel Network where we bring you the Lord's Word every day from some of the country's most inspiring churches and pastors. And today is no different. Let's check out one of the newest members of the Daily Gospel Network. We want to share with you yeah. and your family, your family the love of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. So tune in, tune in, and we will grow together to increase our faith with God with one touch in our streets. We're touching hearts and changing lives with one touch in our streets. We're here for you right now. Hey, welcome everyone to One Touch Ministries. My name is Pastor Shannon Young, and I have the beautiful, the lovely, the missus, the greatest missus in all the world. <laughs> First lady, apostle, ambassador, Nadisha Young is in the house. Woo! Yes. Hallelujah. She is here in the house. She's ready to give the word. She's ready to give you guys exactly... Hey, my, 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 shot up. What God is ready to give you on today. I'm so excited about what's going to go on today. I'm telling you. And today is her day to give a word. And who she invited? The little humble servant. The little lonely. Shannon Young. I'm telling you. I'm just so honored. To be here, mighty woman of God. And how are you feeling on today? I'm trying not to bust. <laughs> <laughs> but ladies and gentlemen, listen, I am so um, happy to have Pastor Shannon and all his enthusiasm that goes yes. along with it. I'm just glad to have you with me, Pastor, because, you know, I always say it, we do so well together than more than apart. So, yes. High five. High five. Amen. Awesome. Yes. Thank you so much. So listen, we have some exciting things that's coming up. Amen. And if you have not subscribed to our YouTube channel, Amen. make sure you go to YouTube, subscribe to our channel, look for One Touch Ministries, and we're going to have some awesome things that's coming up there. I don't even want to tell you what it is, uh, just because I want you to go to the channel so that you can see exactly what we have laid out for you guys. As well as tomorrow. Somebody shout tomorrow. Tomorrow. We have a special Ooh. guest that is going to be right here in the house. Right here at One Touch Ministries. Right here in the living room. Who we got? I'm telling you, we have Bishop Rice mm, from South, I mean South Carolina, my God. Yes. And I believe he's about to bring the victory, the the, the praise, the worship yes. with him in his suitcase. Oh, yeah. Now, oh, in the suitcase. In the suitcase. <laughs> <laughs> Bishop, you better be coming to this ministry with a suitcase. Come on. Because if you ain't, I'm like, the prophet has said, you was coming with a briefcase. I didn't case. say it was the Lord. I just <laughs> said he was coming with a suitcase oh. with the power in the suitcase. Oh, power in the suitcase. Yeah, it was just, Okay, yeah. I got all that all mixed yeah, up. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, See, well, you that's You up there talking about the Holy Ghost, the prophetess. No. no. Yeah, yeah. No, God didn't yeah. say that. Oh, God didn't say that. No, no. Oh, okay. I, 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 it was that's a joke. Oh, no, no, that was fine. Oh, no, okay. I, yeah. Because you know I got dry humor. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, let's get started, y'all, because we got some real serious things that we want to uh, 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 really talk about. You know, we have some things in ministry that we want to talk about, and we want to address these because sometimes, a lot of times, you know, it's good to preach, it's good to, to hoop, and it's good to holler, but 
sometimes we just really need a conversation and a conversation can go a long way and a little bit of training and a little bit of encouragement having a, a good strong um, empowerment session brainstorming session can actually carry your ministry to another level and you will see your ministry blossom literally overnight just by having a brainstorming conversation and meeting that can really help your ministry. So today we really want to just attack those situations and we want to talk about them and give you the opportunity to hear from leader standpoint and also as us being servants as well because not only are we leaders but we have a leader and how we feel as as servants. So today is the day. Amen. Amen. All right. And so um today is just going to be uh, pretty much a conversational piece. Yes. Um, and we're going to just uh, kind of go back and forth and see where the Lord um, lead us uh, with that right there. So on today, you said that you want to talk about a topic of um, offense. Yes. Yes. I, I really want to talk about the spirit of offense that can actually, um, it, I, I feel like the spirit of offense and for what I'm, you know, hearing from God and what he's been telling me that has gripped the church. It has gripped the members of the church. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times when you're in ministry, we become offense offended by a lot of things we become so offended everybody is always offended by rules and regulations people get offended by um the leader uh, um setting order in the ministry and a lot of times when people get offended it causes them to miss what god truly has for them and we don't want you to miss so you know this is what god has been telling me let's address this offend offense that people have this the spirit of offense that people have on them mm -hmm. and so how do you believe that people get offended like what brings about the offense i do believe a lot of it comes from past like the past hurt um past things that happened to them childhood um trauma any type of trauma can cause you to carry the spirit of offense i'm so serious we get offended if people talk to us in um a heavy or stern manner and you say well okay well people shouldn't talk to people any kind of way a lot of times when your leader is talking to you i don't really believe he or she is trying to be offensive to you or talk to you in any any kind of manner mm -hmm. um being a leader myself i know we become very passionate about what it is that we're trying to teach, what it is that we're trying to get across to the people. And sometimes it can sound as if we're being mean or harsh. And because mm -hmm. a person gets offended, you have to check yourself, the person who gets offended. Mm -hmm. You got to find out what happened to you as a child or what happened to you as a young adult to make you feel that everybody... And it seems like it's always people that's in authority that offends you. Mm -hmm. So what happened as a child or as a young adult or what has happened to you recently to cause you to feel like everybody is always offending you? What's the problem? Mm. So how can a person tell the difference between, um, you know, someone actually, um, you know, judging them or just giving them a um what we call it a criticism or a corrective criticism or something like Constru that constructive. constructive criticism yeah yeah so how can a person tell that you know that basically they're being belittled versus constructive criticism because i believe that sometimes it mm -hmm. is a constructive criticism yes but then they take it offensively and that's a lot of times not the case Exactly. And I do believe that, um, cause I know for myself that has happened to me, you know, because, um, I, I've had things to happen. Trauma has happened to me in my childhood, which, mm -hmm. um, I grew up with parents who were very stern, very strict, and they did a lot of, um, verbal abuse. Mm -hmm. That's one of the issues mm -hmm. that I faced as a child mm -hmm. into my adulthood. Being verbally abused by my parents. So, I would get offended when people would say certain things to me. And I would take it 
oh, like like somebody was trying to hurt me. So you took it like a personal attack. I took it personal. Mm -hmm. And it became very personal to the point where I didn't even give what they said to me that was actually going to help me a chance. Mm -hmm. I did not give it a chance. And the reason why I didn't give it a chance was because I was so busy focusing on what they said to me and how they said it opposed to what they said. Gotcha. Okay? Mm -hmm. So I was so concerned of their tone mm -hmm. to the point where I missed the whole entire mark. Mm -hmm. So that's why the Holy Ghost has been dealing with me about people who get offended by everything, the spirit of offense. Don't allow offense, the offense spirit, the spirit of offense, being offended by everything that people say to you, cause you to miss your next, your your purpose, your destiny, your future. You can miss mm -hmm. out on so much because you are so scared that somebody is going to snatch something from you opposed to actually somebody pouring, mm -hmm. pouring into you, mm -hmm. you know? So once I got over my trauma, my personal trauma, mm -hmm. and I I got healed from the trauma, that's when, when people would give me... Con I, ne I, I don't even look at it as criticism. I look at it as constructive. Okay. And like you used to tell me, oh, uh, uh, um, chew up the meat, spit out the bones. Mm -hmm. Okay? And I tell you sometimes I don't even like to say spit out the bones because sometimes the bones will actually cut away what's not supposed to be there. Mm -hmm. So I had to learn not only just to chew the meat, I had to learn to chew the meat. And keep the bones as well. So chew the meat and chew the bone. Because what happens is I found myself like it, it was like God was starting to cut certain things away from me. Mm -hmm. And I, I became more smoother, calmer, understanding, and I accepted more. Mm -hmm. I accepted the information more. And if I felt, even though um, the person was saying something that was going to be helpful to me, and if I did feel a small smidgen of that thing was going to that has offended me in some type of way, you know what I would do? I would let them finish. I let them finish. Mm -hmm. Let them get it out. Okay? And then I, I stopped them after they finish, and I let them know it was not what you said mm -hmm. that offended me. It was how you said it mm -hmm. that offended me. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, so that was, um, just, you know, as you were talking, I was just thinking like, you know, okay, well, you have a lot of people who, because it sounds like something that, um, happens more than just the church. It sounds like something that happens on a daily basis, mm -hmm. um, to people. Yeah. And so they take it into, you know, their everyday life, their everyday living. Come on. So, you know, what are some of the steps you believe to help people to come out of that uh, spirit of offense? Well, I believe the steps that God has given me is for me to to really learn how to just calm down. Mm -hmm. Just learn how to calm down. Learn how to listen when someone's talking. Mm -hmm. That means, like, not fumbling with your cell phone. That's not mean turning your head, twisting your eyes, and all rolling your eyes, trying to, you know, showing your... No, look at that person and let them per, let, per, let that person talk to you. Mm -hmm. and, and listen and let it soak in. And then, once you listen, you'll be able to hear. It's not what they're... It's not them saying this is who you are. Mm -hmm. They're just saying from what they see mm -hmm. and what they hear. Mm -hmm. And, you know, even with us, like when we are talking to one another and I'll tell you, honey, I'm not saying to you, this is what you're doing to me or this is um, 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 something that you said. I'm just saying how it made me feel. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, this is what it looks like. Mm -hmm. Can you do me a favor? Can you step back and just see what I see or can you examine yourself and I think self examinations are so important mm -hmm. and that I'm not just talking that I'm going to switch up a little bit I'm not just talking about um with just people who who are offended I'm even talking about leaders it is good as a leader to sit back and and, and actually ask God God show me me mm-hmm 
You know, a lot of times we want the, the microphone. We want to get off and show off and we want to shout all over the place and we want to be seen and we want to be heard. But nobody takes the time to ask, ask God to put that mirror in front of their face and say, hey, God, show me me. Show me who I am. Show me what I'm doing just so that I can not only uh, 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 become relatable, I can also become understandable. I can understand people. So God gave me this thing. He said for me, he said, I don't want you to, to have a, uh, 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 to be, I want you not to be relatable. I'm sorry. He doesn't want me to be audible. He wants me to be relatable. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. He wants me to be relatable and not audible mm -hmm. because when I become audible, all I do is just sound the alarm. Mm -hmm. That means I'm just constantly mm -hmm. when I'm audible. I'm just constantly going. Mm -hmm. But when I'm relatable, I stop. I walk a mile in my other friend's shoes. Mm -hmm. I take a moment to step in that person's shoes. And I actually put their glasses on my eyes. And I actually see through their lens mm -hmm. the things that they face, the things that they go through. I, I actually put their ears on my ear and I hear what they're hearing. So that's what God is calling for us leaders to do. Learn how to be relatable, not audible. You know, we do so much talking to the people. We do so much preaching to the people. Mm -hmm. But we never try to relate to the people. You know, today we experienced something um, that was very devastating. The lady who was preaching, she was preaching to the people but she was audible but she wasn't relatable mm -hmm. she had a beautiful little white outfit on looking like a pure angel <laughs> but yes. when I'm telling you she was not relatable to the people because and the reason why I say she wasn't relatable to the people because there was a hundred people in that building and that building had people who weren't safe mm -hmm. a hundred people who were not Save. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, I'll say 99. The young lady that inv um, asked us to come. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She saved, but the rest of her family was not. Okay? That was 99. She, 99 people. She had a 99% chance mm -hmm. to impact people. Mm -hmm. But because she was worrying about the social distancing, because she was worrying about the time, because she looked at the family and saw that they weren't, uh, uh, they weren't like her. Mm -hmm. They didn't look like her because they came in with jeans, ripped jeans and t-shirts, sneakers. And because the hair was uh, uh, um, to, uh, locks. Mm -hmm. Some people had hats on mm -hmm. because they didn't talk like her. She looked over those people, delivered a word, and it wasn't a word from God. It was a word that she created. Very true. A word that she created. I'm just going to be real. You know me. I don't play no, I don't pull no punches. And I don't care who don't like it. She gave a word that she created, and she looked over the people, and she was not even able to see that there was 99 souls sitting out there that needed to be saved. Because had she did that, she would have called an altar call and 99 people would have got saved. That's right. That's correct. Because why? She became audible and not relatable. When you become relatable to the people, you get an opportunity to really walk in the shoes of a sinner. You get an opportunity to see what a sinner sees. And matter of fact, you begin to roll back the curtains over your life and mm -hmm. begin to say, God, I see what I used to be. Now, I, I, I think I want to help that sister. I yeah. think I want to help that brother mm -hmm. because I know mm -hmm. that somebody took the time and prayed for me, had me on their mind, took the time to pray for me, and, 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 and look at me now. Now yes. I can wear the white dress and feel good about it. Mm -hmm. But you know what I'm saying? But see, you got some people that are quick to be audible but refuse to be relatable. Mm -hmm. My God, I'm done. Ooh, I can't. <laughs> I'm about to go in. Uh-huh. And so, um, you know, but that instance on that on on today, we as um, ministers and leaders and pastors and everything else, we have to be able to um, connect with the people. I think that's the main thing is we have to know how to connect with the people. We have to know how to, um, you know, address whatever needs to be addressed, but also connect with the people. Like I said, those were souls that were right there hanging in exactly. the balance. Yes. And because there were souls that were hanging in the balance. You know, uh, us as ministers, we as ministers and leaders, 
we have to be able to say, hey, you know, um, although this may not be, you know, the situation uh, right now, but hey, um, there is uh, a cross that has that has blood that has been shared shed just for you and hey right now is a great time mm -hmm. to give your heart to the Lord right now is a great time to hey uh, be able to meet Jesus in heaven that's it that's regardless it. if they believe because a lot of people don't believe like you believe that's right you know you have people that have other religions and stuff like that you know yeah and, but you know but when there's an air opportunity come on, come on. to be able to have those um those people from different religions that's and they're right. around that's you know right. hey preach the gospel that's it that's it and come if on. you want to tune up you can tune up and jesus went to to calvary to save a wrench like you and me listen Preach that cross. Come on, come on. That, that, well, that was the time that she should have been preaching the cross instead yes. of talking about what the girl did. Everybody know what the girl did. Right. Everybody knew what her past was. Yes. But she was dead and gone. We needed people. We needed someone to speak to the living. Yes. Someone that was going to relate to these people. Mm -hmm. You know, it reminds me of a saying that I was told. Um, it's called crepe hanger. Mm. Crepe hanger. <laughs> a crepe hanger is a person who looks at the dark side of everything, mm -hmm. every situation, always has something negative to say. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 um, they're a killjoy. Mm, yes. They kill mm -hmm. the joy in every situation. Come on. So I'm telling you leaders today, don't be crepe hangers. Okay? Don't be crepe hangers. Don't be a killjoy. God wants us to have joy and you know what? We need to bring the joy. We need to bring that sound. That sound that's in our belly. We need to give people. But see, a lot of times we can't bring the joy when we don't have no joy. Mm, wow. Because your life is messed up. Your life is tore up and things ain't going the way you want them to go. Mm -hmm. A lot of times you want to kill the joy of other people. Mm -hmm. Or you get angry because other people have something that you don't have, which is joy. Mm -hmm. A lot of times they don't have no money, but they got the joy. And you get angry about that because why? You, 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 your life is all jacked up. Mm -hmm. Leaders, get your life right. So you can preach the gospel properly to the people of God. So you can bless these people and, and, and give them the word of God from a good heart, from a good place. See, you know, a lot of times we as leaders, we don't understand people watch us. Yes, that's very When the true. young lady, we were coming out of church and a young lady told me, she said, you are more beautiful in person than you are on TV. <laughs> And honey, I almost just dropped to my feet right there, and I, oh, I did a, almost did an <laughs> ugly cry. I mean, you know, the, the 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 cry that you get you do when you getting ready to get saved, that kind of cry. <laughs> I was getting ready to do the ugly cry, mm -hmm. but the Holy Ghost let me know later on that day. He said, "Had you came out the church cussing, mm -hmm. fussing, mm -hmm. screaming, and hollering, she mm -hmm. wouldn't have been able to say that." To you come on but because i had joy when i came in and i said okay i'm gonna have the unspeakable joy ha huh? glory to god when i leave out i came in one way but i'm gonna leave out even better than what i came in yes she was able to say that and i was able to receive it so this is what i'm saying don't keep going to the church house don't keep doing these lives on facebook don't keep doing things to cause the extra people to to sow into to the ministry and you not sowing in with joy you're not sowing yes. in with happiness you're not sowing in uh, uh with love and understanding you know mm -hmm. being a pastor's child a lot of times you know my parents weren't happy they were happy in front of the people but they were sad at it behind closed doors. Mm. God is calling for y'all to stop being sad behind closed doors. God is calling for you to get some joy behind closed doors. Get your house in order, leader. Get your life right, my God, from Zion. Instead of you worrying about what people are saying, stop fasting and praying. Spend some time with the Holy Ghost. And I guarantee you, joy will come. Joy will come. Happiness will come to you if you will learn how to spend some time with the Holy Ghost. I had to learn it as a leader I, I I used to look at my parents and I said I don't want to be like that mm -hmm. if being a leader is like that I don't want to be like that mm -hmm. and the Holy Ghost told me he said well the way you can get out of that situation if you will spend a little bit more time with me mm -hmm. and then you will learn how to balance your life learn how to have some fun 
It's okay to go bowling. It's yeah. okay to go to a movie. It's okay to have family day. It's okay to say yes instead of saying no all the time. Mm -hmm. Enjoy your life. You will begin to see the balance. And you'll begin to see the joy come back into your life. I praise God for you, Pastor Shannon, because all the time I say, you brought balance into my life. Hallelujah. Because I was in a position where I was just ministry, 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 and that's it. And when you told me, you said, baby, it's okay for us to do ministry, but mm -hmm. we need to have balance because in order for us to continue to preach and teach to these people, yes. in order for us to continue to love the people of God, we as husband and wife must have a balance. We mm -hmm. must have joy. And in order for us to have joy and then tell people to have joy, mm -hmm. we got to work on this thing. Yes. And I'm so glad that I accepted the call for balance because, man, oh, man, I love <laughs> to go bowling now because yes. why? It brings me joy. Mm -hmm. And when I go back to church, mm -hmm. I have a little bit more joy. Because <laughs> I have balance. Yes. Balance brings about so much. Yes. Spending time with family. Yes. And you say, well, my family is not saved. That's the best people to hang with. That's right. Stop worrying right. about Stop being religious. Mm -hmm. Stop being so religious. Mm -hmm. Jesus hung, hung come, out come with... Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, I'm getting ready to beat nah. him up now. I'm getting ready to beat him up because he's he talking right. He's talking right. Uh. And this is the kind of things that you must understand. Well, if your family, um, they're not saved, those are the ones that you need to be around. Mm -hmm. You I'm don't sure have good. to preach to them, but you have to be relatable. Yes. Okay, yes. when we go home to Michigan... Mm hmm your mm -hmm. family, you are the family pastor. Yes. Do y'all not yes. know we pastor the family? Mm -hmm. My husband and I. Even mm -hmm. when we went home for Andy's funeral. Mm -hmm. They said, well, we don't know if we can talk our talk because we don't want the pastor and the first lady <laughs> to get upset with us. And we told them what? <laughs> go ahead. You go do what you got. Nothing that Enjoy said. your life. Enjoy your life. We are human like you are. Mm -hmm. And do you not know? They begin to talk and they begin to say how they want to change their lives. Yes. And they want to turn things around. Yes. And they the, the message that you preach, mm -hmm. how it touched their hearts and changed their lives. Yes. My God yes. from Zion. Hey, glory to God. You actually high. said, touch their hearts and change their lives. You better go ahead with the church slogan. slogan. Okay. <laughs> She's been trying to get that together for the past. Yo, this is our 21st episode. <laughs> And let me tell you something. My wife, every single week, be like, and what is it again? And what is it again? And then, as y'all know, we have the church song now. And she be trying to sing the song. And she be like, and what is it again? She then finally said, touch your hearts up, my God, and, and change, change your lives. <laughs> but listen, ladies and gentlemen, we love y'all. We thank God for you. Yes. Okay? And we just want you to know that there, there's a life outside of ministry. Let's yes. not be bitter. Let's change our minds, hearts, and yes. souls, and our bodies. Be, can, begin to be more happier. Yes. Have some balance. And yes. stop carrying the spirit of offense. Yes. Because it'll cause you to miss out on what God has for yes. you. I would love to continue this conversation of the spirit of offense. If you want to. Continue with us. Make sure you log in to our Facebook page and yes. tell them about the Facebook page, oh, yeah. Pastor Shannon. Go to uh, the number <laughs> one touch M, and you will find us right there on Facebook. You can also follow us on Instagram, yes. one touch M, and again on our YouTube channel. Um, so don't forget tomorrow uh, we're going to be with Bishop Rice. You can uh, get the yes. Zoom link. Where um, you're going to be able to hear him preach. Amen. 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 So thank you so much for joining us and enjoy your weekend. Amen. For more information on today's Spotlight Church, Visit them on the internet and follow them on social media. I'm Renee Johnson with the Daily Gospel Network. And until next time, remember, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us.